Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, this is my 8th chapter, the topic of today's discussion is Dower, that is Meher in Muslim law. So today I would like to discuss concept of Dower, nature of Dower and types of Dower and what rights and remedies are available to a Muslim female under Muslim law, if dower is not paid by her husband at the time of marriage. So let us understand the concept of dower prescribed in Muslim law. As you, you all might be knowing that there were several types of marriages in Islam before advent of Islam, different kinds of marriage like bina form of marriage, ball form of marriage were prevalent in Arabian society. But after advent of Islam, Prophet Muhammad he had great concern about social level which were prevailing in Arabian society at that time. And polygamy, polygamy or polygandry was one of them. So there was no set or static society nor there was set norm to regulate the society. So, Prophet Muhammad he was very much concerned about social evils which were prevailing in that society, in Arabian society. So, he decided to change social evils which were prevailing in those Arabian society. In my previous lecture, I have already highlighted that there were two important pre-Islamic customs like Talaq and Dawar. Dawar was also prevalent among Muslims before the advent of Islam. Though form of dower was different, either Muslim husband who used to give money or property to the guardian of girl or to the girl directly, but there was no uh, set rule for that. So it was decided by Prophet Muhammad to make slight modification in the concept of dower. Dower is also pre-Islamic custom, but it became part of Islam after getting approval from the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad duly approved dower as an important component of Muslim marriage. So he said that Muslim male should pay something at the time of marriage as a token of respect, just to pay respect to the dignity of Muslim women. Muslim husband should pay something, should pay money or property to his wife at the time of marriage. For what? For her rainy days. In case of dissolution of marriage or in case of death of husband, Muslim female must be in position to maintain herself. So for that reason, this concept was recognized in Islam. So this is the logic behind recognition of dower in Islam. Prophet Muhammad allowed Muslims, he said that Muslim male should come forward and he should Muslim, every Muslim male should pay something at the time of marriage. So before I start nature of dower, how does it work in Islam, I would like to discuss concept. As you might be knowing that Nikah was duly approved by Prophet Muhammad regular marriage before the recognition of nikah there was different form of marriages for example bina form of marriage was also prevalent at that time which, which i would like to explain you with the help of this slide so you look you can see on this is on your screen that there were three important features which two pre-Islamic 
customs prevailing in before the advent of Islam. In ball form of marriage, Muslim husband used to give money or property to the guardian, not to the girl to whom they wanted to marry. So, they used to pay something to guardian of that girl to whom they wanted to marry. So, it was, uh, it was a kind of practice prevailing in those society, in Arabian society. There was another form of marriage that is Bina form of marriage. You can see on this on your screen. In Bina form of marriage, gift, money or property was to be delivered by husband. Husband used to pay price or property directly to the girl, not to the guardian. For what? To establish sexual relationship with the female to whom he wanted to marry. So, there were two important practices, two important marriages prevailing in those society, ball form of marriage and bina form of marriage. After the advent of Islam, Prophet Muhammad recognized nikah as a valid form of marriage. Nikah is also treated as sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. So, in what he did in nikah, he said that Muslim husband must pay something, must pay money or property to his wife just to pay respect towards his wife, towards his wife. So, Muslim husband should pay token of respect. So, should pay money or property as a token of respect to the girl, not to the father, to that female to whom he wanted to marry. Since then, this practice got recognition in Islam and this Muslim husband is obliged to pay money or property at the time of marriage as a token of respect. So, you, you see in this way, the concept of dower was recognized under Islam. So, there are three important things which I would like to discuss. Abdur Rahim has also given definition, has also defined this dower. According to Abdur Rahim, dower is a consideration which is paid by husband to his wife at the time of marriage. Justice Mahmood has also defined dower. Justice Mahmood has made remarkable remark about dower. So, when he decided that leading case Abdur Qadir versus Salima 1886 Allahabad High Court. Being a judge of Allahabad High Court, this case is very important Abdul Qadir versus Salima. In that case, Justice Mahmood observed that dower is money or property which is paid by Muslim husband to his wife as a token of respect at the time of marriage. He further says, if, if money or dower is not paid by Muslim husband at the time of marriage, law confers right upon Muslim female to get dower from her husband. So, he observed that, Prophet uh, Justice Mahmood observed that, where dower is not paid by Muslim husband at the time of marriage, even though law confers right upon Muslim male to get her dower from her husband. So, according to Justice Mahmood, dower is not an moral obligation of Muslim husband to pay something to his wife, but it is legal obligation of Muslim husband to pay something to pay dower to his wife at the time of marriage. If dower is not paid by Muslim husband deliberately or knowingly or unknowingly and marriage is performed, it does not mean that Muslim female will lose her right against her husband. It only means that if marriage is contracted even in the absence of dower, Muslim female is entitled that wife is entitled to get dower from her husband by filing a suit in a civil court, recovery for unpaid dower. 
so she is entitled to get dower from her husband so i would like to discuss the nature object and nature of dower what is the purpose of dower with what objective this concept was incorporated in islam what was the motive behind recognition of this concept with the help of this slide you can understand this the object of dower is to provide financial assistance to a muslim female the one it has you see how dower works under islam the purpose of dower is to provide financial assistance to muslim married women and second is to check restriction upon unrestricted right of divorce of muslim husband muslim husband as you might be knowing that in my previous lecture i have already highlighted that muslim husband they have got uncontrolled and unrestricted right about divorce so they have uncontrolled and unrestricted right they can give divorce to their wives whenever they want by just by pronouncing talaq ila or jihad there are different methods to dissolve their method uh, marriage so they are muslim husband they are uh, they have more liberty in comparison to muslim female so they can dissolve their marriage they can give divorce to their wives whenever they decide whenever they uh, think so if uh, the amount of dower would be so high if the amount of dower is fixed so high at the time of marriage muslim husband will think twice before giving divorce to his wife so usually the amount of dower is fixed so high at the time of marriage so that muslim husband will think twice before giving divorce to his wife so you see how this uh, dower works in islam and this dower has to fulfill dower has to ensure financial status of muslim female it provides financial security to a muslim female as well as it puts restriction upon muslim husband not to give divorce to their wives whenever they want so amount of dower the high amount of dower may put husband in peril in trouble to give divorce to their wives so for this purpose this concept of dower was recognized and this dower works also works effectively in under in islam second important thing is that you can see on this slide dower is like a debt if dower is not paid it is like a debt and wife is considered as creditor and husband is debtor so what rights a creditor can claim against his debtor similarly in case of unpaid dower muslim female can also exercise all those rights which a creditor can use against his his debtor so unpaid dower gives liberty to muslim female to file a suit against her husband for recovery of unpaid dower though you all might you all might be knowing about uh, nature of dower that uh, debt debt is of two types secured debt unsecured debt so unpaid dower is unsecured debt security is not given against unpaid dower even though like actionable claim muslim female is entitled to get her unpaid dower just by filing civil suit civil suit in the court of law so you can see that how unpaid dower puts restriction upon muslim husband not to give divorce to their wives and if dower is not paid by muslim husband to his wife how muslim female can get dower from her husband now come to the types of dower classification of dower as i said dower is referred as meher in muslim law so 
डावर इज क्लासीफाइड इन टू टू कैटेगरीज स्पेसिफाइड डावर अनस्पेसिफाइड डावर स्पेसिफाइड डावर यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्लाइड आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्लेन दिस डावर इन ब्रीफ स्पेसिफाइड डावर अनस्पेसिफाइड डावर स्पेसिफाइड डावर इज रेफर्ड एज मेहर ए मुशम्मा इन अरेबिक वर्ड आई मे बी आई मे बी रॉन्ग इन प्रोनाउंसिंग दिस मेहर ए मुशम्मा सो डोंट गेट इट रॉन्ग मेहर ए मुशम्मा स्पेसिफाइड डावर अनस्पेसिफाइड डावर मेहर ए मिसल मेहर ए मुशम्मा स्पेसिफाइड डावर अगेन इज क्लासीफाइड इन टू टू कैटेगरीज इट मे बी प्रॉम्प्ट और इट मे बी डेफर्ड प्रॉम्प्ट डावर इज रेफर्ड एज मुजल इन अरेबिक वर्ड डेफर्ड आवर इज रेफर्ड एज मुजल इन अरेबिक वर्ड सो हाउ नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस स्पेसिफाइड डावर एंड अनस्पेसिफाइड डावर यू सी मुस्लिम हजबैंड एट द टाइम ऑफ मैरिज में स्पेसिफाई द अमाउंट ऑफ डावर इन द प्रजेंस ऑफ एजेंट वकील and that amount of dower is fixed by husband at the time of marriage and that amount and quasi in the presence of quasi usually quasi has to enter the amount of dower as directed by muslim husband so if dower is specified for example if muslim husband at the time of marriage makes promise to his wife that he would pay 2 lakh rupees 3 lakh rupees as a dower to his wife so this kind of promise would be treated as dower and if he pay something if suppose if uh, muslim husband at the time of marriage pay rupees 3 lakh 2 lakh rupees in cash or if he delivers property that i am delivering this property to you as a uh, dower so that property that money would be treated as would be considered as specified dower because muslim husband has specified at the time of marriage the important thing which you need to understand that dower may be specified by muslim husband or by his father or guardian as i said marriage can be muslim marriage can be contracted by the guardian by father or grandfather of muslim male or female so muslim father or grandfather can also make a promise that he would pay this much amount to this female as a dower so that dower may be either by guardian or by muslim husband at the time of marriage so you see the important thing is that at the time of marriage qazi and wakil that is also known as agent they are supposed to be present at the time of marriage so as per the direction of muslim husband qazi has to enter the amount of dower in the register and the register is always kept along with qazi if dower is in writing form if deed is executed by muslim husband by mentioning that he muslim husband is willing to pay this much amount 1 lakh 2 lakh rupees as a dower so that dower is called as dower deed or mehar nama mehar nama means dower deed if that and that is dower nama is documentary proof of dower and with the help of that dower nama muslim female can claim her unpaid dower from her husband so just by putting that document before the before the court she may ask she may request the court that this is the this is the mehar nama this is the deed which was signed by the parties at the time of marriage and in that deed in that document muslim had muslim husband had made promise to pay this much amount 1 lakh 2 lakh rupees as a dower to that muslim female so with the help of that document she can claim unpaid dower from her husband so this is prompt dower 
The second important thing which you need to remember that if dower is not specified at the time of marriage, knowingly or unknowingly, and marriage is solemnized, performed. So, question may arise that what amount, what part of that amount would be treated as prompt or deferred? So, it, I will discuss it in detail. Here you see prompt dower, uh, specified dower may be prompt or may be deferred. As I said, at the time of marriage, Muslim husband has to specify the nature of dower, whether it is prompt or it is deferred. If Muslim husband specifies that this dower should be treated as prompt dower, meaning thereby soon after the completion of marriage, Muslim female would be at liberty to get her prompt dower uh, after the marriage. So, this is this is the nature of prompt dower. If dower is prompt, so that can be claimed by Muslim female promptly soon after the completion of marriage. So, Muslim female can can get her dower, prompt dower after the completion of marriage. It may be specified by husband that it would be deferred. It depends upon mutual agreement between the parties. As I said, Muslim husband may ask that uh, dower would be paid in case of dissolution of marriage. This 1 lakh rupees, 2 lakh rupees, which is in form of any promissory note or in form of check. So, he may also give Muslim husband may also give check to his wife and that amount may also be treated as dower. So, he may say that in case of happening of any event, Muslim wife would be at liberty to get that dower. Meaning thereby, Muslim husband has deferred to pay that amount to pay the dower to his wife. So, if any such kind of condition is imposed that this amount 1 lakh rupee as a dower would be paid by Muslim husband after the marriage, these are uh, sorry at the time of marriage he is, uh, he is giving this 1 lakh rupees to his wife and the rest 2 lakh rupees would be given to that Muslim female after the marriage. So, here 2 lakh rupees which would be given to Muslim wife after the marriage may be considered as deferred dower and that may be subject to that dower may be subject to the fulfillment of certain events like uh, condition may be that in case of cruelty committed by husband against his wife, wife would be at liberty to get that amount or in case of bigamy, in case of domestic violence, if domestic violence would be committed by Muslim husband against his wife, then the rest amount would be claimed by Muslim female from her husband. So, in case of happening of these certain events, that deferred hour can be claimed by Muslim female. So, this is deferred hour. Why it is called deferred? Because husband has deferred to pay that dower at the time of marriage. If amount, if, if pro money or property is paid at the time of marriage, it would be prompt dower, specified and prompt dower. If Muslim husband does not pay whole amount of dower at the time of marriage, he says that he would pay 10 lakh rupees as a dower, but he right now at the time of marriage, he is paying 5 lakh rupees cash to his wife and the rest 5 lakh would be paid by him after the marriage in case of happening of certain events. So, the rest though the remaining 5 lakh rupees would be treated as deferred hour in Islam in Muslim law. And this the first 5 lakh rupees which has been pay, already paid by Muslim husband to his wife at the time of marriage that this is prompt hour there is no doubt at all 
because that amount has already been paid by Muslim husband at the time of marriage. So that is prompt dower and second problem which I referred before you that is deferred dower. So this is prompt and deferred. If dower is not specified at the time of marriage, then it would be unspecified dower and there may be possibility that Muslim husband knowingly or unknowingly may not specify the nature of dower, whether it is prompt or deferred. So that dower is generally treated as unspecified dower. But in present era, Muslim husband has to pay something at the time of marriage. So neither he can defer to pay the dower nor the dower may be specified. In 99, mathematically we can say in 99 percent cases Muslim husband has to pay dower at the time of marriage. So dower is always you can say dower is always specified at the time of marriage. In ancient period or in 20 or 30 or 40 years back might have been a practice that uh, 30, 40 years back Muslim husband um, used to give dower to his wife or they decided not to give dower to his wife. But in present era Muslim husband they, ha they have to specify the dower and they also deliver the property or amount or sum of money at the time of marriage. So dower is always you can say is always prompt specified by husband at the time of marriage. So there has been long debate about minimum or maximum dower but you see that is written in textbook that what much how dower should be fixed and what amount can be fixed as a dower. Is there any minimum limit or maximum limit for fixation of dower in Muslim law? So Hanafi law says that every Hanafi Muslim husband should pay at least 10 dirham at the time of marriage. Maliki says that every Maliki Sunni Muslim husband should pay at least 3 dirham at the time of marriage, not less than 3 dirham. Maliki as I, I have already highlighted in my previous lecture that Sunni sect divided into 4 subsect, Hanafi, Maliki, Hanbali. So Hanafi school majority of Sunni Muslims represent Hanafi ideology, Hanafi school. So according to Hanafi ideology, no Hanafi Sunni Muslim husband should pay less than 10 dirham as a dower. So they are not allowed to pay less than 10 dirham dower, dower to their wives at the time of marriage. And Maliki Sunni Muslim male, they are not allowed to pay less than 3 dirham at the time of marriage. Dirham, here you see dirham was a silver coin and the one value of one dirham is equal to approximately 1.25 gram silver coin. So you just can multiply 10 gram, 10 dirham means one dirham is equal to 1.25 gram silver coin. So you can just multiply 10 into 1.25. So you can calculate the exact or market value of 10 dirham, 10 dirham. But you see this uh, minimum dollar has become obsolete, outdated. It has only academic relevance because nowadays the amount of dollar is fixed by Muslim husband as per the financial status of Muslim female, considering the financial status, social status of Muslim female, her educational qualification, beauty, the amount of dower is always high. So this is common practice 
prevailing among Muslims, even in India, Muslims husband at the time of marriage, they fix high amount of dower to uh, for their wives. There is one important uh, saying or that uh, practice which uh, Shia Muslims follow that Prophet Muhammad on behalf of you see I think uh, it is also uh, written in textbook that uh, Ali had paid uh, 500 dirham uh, as a dower to Fatima at the time of marriage. So, it is said that 500 dirham no Shia Muslim, no Shia husband should go beyond that limit fixed by that 500 dirham which was paid at the time of marriage of Fatima. So, it is written in textbook watch it. So, you see this minimum or maximum limit fixed by different schools of Muslim law, Hanafi school says that it should not be less than 10, Maliki says that it should not be less than 3 and Shia says that it should not be, it should not exceed 500 dirham. So, this is all about your classification of dower, prompt, specified. Another important thing is that where dower is not specified and deed is executed, there is dower deed, there is meharnama, but meharnama is silent about promptness or deferred dower means it is the dower is that meharnama is silent, whether what part or whether whole amount should be treated as prompt or deferred. So, in that in that case law is different for Sunnis and Shia. Under Sunni law where dower is not specified by husband at the time of marriage, partly dower means half of the dower would be treated as prompt and the rest half would be treated as deferred. This, this, uh, this may arise, this type of question may arise where dower is not specified by husband at the time of marriage. In that case, law is different for Sunnis and Shia. Here there is difference between the opinion between these two ideology. So, Sunni law says that one half of the dower would be treated as prompt and the rest half would be treated as uh, deferred dower. But in Shia law, the whole amount whether it is specified or not the whole amount of dower would be treated as prompt dower and soon after the marriage Shia Muslim female would be at liberty to get her unspecified dower as a prompt dower by filing suit for recovery of unpaid dower. So, this is law regarding uh, unspecified dower. So, this doubt has been cleared by the even by the court law is not. So, that is why I now come to the fixation of dower. Who can fix dower? Who can fix mehar? With the help of this slide, you can understand that either guardian can fix the amount of dower at the time of marriage or Muslim husband can fix dower at the time of marriage. Dower can be fixed by Muslim husband at the time of marriage, before the marriage or even after the marriage. There are three circumstances where dower can be fixed. Either dower can be fixed by Muslim husband at the time of marriage or it can be fixed after the marriage or even before the marriage dower can be fixed. But question may be who can fix the dower. So, obviously, Muslim husband can fix dower. In exceptional circumstances, guardian can also fix, fix dower for his son or grandson. Suppose if son is minor, Muslim son is minor and 
his father or grandfather is willing to contract marriage of his minor son or grandson then on behalf of that minor son father or grandfather can make a promise that he would pay this much amount as a dower so one thing so this is very clear that either guardian can fix dower at the time of marriage or muslim husband can fix dower at the time of marriage what is the practice you may ask there what is the practice the practice is muslim husband has to fix dower at the time of marriage and uh, you can say that in present era in 99% cases dower is fixed by muslim uh, husband at the time of marriage one person chance may be where local customs prevail or uh, due to local customs or uh, family customs um, guardian may also fix dower for her you know, for his son or grandson so that is very less chance in present era if you talk about in modern era in modern era guardian generally uh, muslim husband uh, they have to pay dower at the time of marriage but in 1% cases in 1% or 2% cases you can say guardian can also fix dower so this is uh, law about fixation of dower now come to another important aspect of dower if dower is fixed by guardian at the time of marriage so i have highlighted this uh, this uh, you you can see on this slide rule of privity of contract would not be applicable i have just put it uh, under the guardian this slide a rule of privity of contract would not be applicable what is rule of privity of contract as you might be knowing that according to rule of privity of contract a stranger cannot sue and cannot be sued meaning thereby a party who is not uh, a person who is not party to the contract cannot sue or cannot be sued that is a stranger for the agreement that is that is the stranger for the contract so being a stranger he cannot so he cannot become the party so privity according to rule of privity of consideration a person who is not party to the contract cannot sue cannot take any action against the party of the contract this is the rule so you see in under muslim law if marriage is contracted by the guardian at the time of marriage son was minor and his father had contracted marriage of his son and he had made a promise that he would pay this much amount to uh, this much amount as a dower after attaining the age of puberty after becoming adult adult the age of majority in muslim law for purpose of marriage as you might be knowing that is 15 years not 21 years or 18 years that minimum age of 15 years is known as age of puberty age of puberty is that age which is supposed that at that at, at the age of 15 muslims are supposed to have acquired sexual competence and they are allowed to contract marriage so after becoming bulag after be becoming adult after attaining the age of 15 years if muslim husband whose marriage was contracted by his guardian when he was minor cannot say before the court that he was minor at the time of marriage he was not party to that agreement to the matrimonial agreement so he cannot be compelled by the court to pay this much amount as a dower he being a stranger though obviously he is a stranger he he was not party to the matrimonial contract because he was not in position to understand the nature and consequences of his act what what was doing by his father or grandfather at the time of his minority since he was minor so he was not supposed to have acquired sufficient maturity 
so he can take plea before the court that he was not in position to understand the nature and consequences he was minor and minors agreement is no agreement in i of law so that is why this matrimonial agreement about dower about uh, payment of dower should be set aside should be struck down by the court so court will not accept his plea that he was minor or he was not party to the contract at the time of marriage muslim husband will have to pay that that amount of dower which was fixed by his father or grandfather during his minority when he was minor in every case he will have to pay that amount that dower fixed by his father or grandfather this is this is the law where dower is not paid by muslim husband and the dower was fixed by his father or grandfather even even then muslim female muslim wife is entitled to get dower from her husband so this is another important aspect of dower which you need to understand so now come to this right and remedies of non payment of dower before i start this right and remedies what rights and remedies are available to a muslim female if dower is not paid before i start you all must be you all are supposed to know that what are the subject matter of dower what thing can be paid delivered as a dower to muslim female so you see any property or any sum of money can be paid or delivered by muslim husband to his wife at the time of marriage any property or any sum of money can be subject matter of dower can be paid by muslim husband or delivered if if it is property it may be delivered by muslim husband can be fixed as a dower but un islamic property which is un islamic cannot be subject matter of dower which which you need to understand now come to this and there is important aspect of dower that is right and remedies of non payment of dower with the help of this slide you all would be in position to have complete understanding about the nature of unpaid dower if dower is not paid by muslim husband then what would be the consequences what would be the remedies available to a muslim female being aggrieved what she can get from the court i would like to discuss in brief well we you can see this slide on your screen so with the help of this slide i just want to explain the rights and remedies on non payment of dower which i have already so you see before i start this uh, right and remedies available to muslim women in case of non payment of dower you all might be knowing that sharia act 1937 the act was enacted with a specific objective the object was to identify the core areas through which muslims might be regulated so for that purpose the sharia act 1937 was regulated uh, enacted in the year of 1937 according to section 2 of the sharia act there are 10 subject matters which would be that those 10 subject matter would only be regulated by muslim personal law not by any other law which you need to understand and this dower is one of them you you need to understand dower is one important subject matter of subject matter enumerated in section 2 of the sharia act 1937 so what would be the procedure about dower mehar only muslim personal law would be applicable no other law can regulate this dower meaning thereby whatever things are enumerated in section 2 of the sharia act can only be regulated can only be governed by muslim personal law so dower is one of them dower is also specifically mentioned as a personal subject matter of muslims 
so muslim personal law would be applicable to regulate this dower what would be the nature of dower and what so this dower cannot be equated with dowry unlike hindu law in hindu marriage no husband is not allowed to give something to his wife nor wife is allowed to give property or money that is so this dowry this dower cannot be equated with dower i have already highlighted the purpose specific purpose of dower so no need to discuss it again now come to this another significant aspect of unpaid dower where dower is not paid the first and foremost important right which muslim wife can exercise against her husband that is refusal from cohabitation she can refuse to give company to her husband in abdul qadir versus salima aia 1986 elahabad high court in that case in abdul qadir versus salima case you just uh, uh, look at this in that case elahabad high court justice mahmud of elahabad high court he observed that where dower is not paid by muslim husband to his wife muslim wife has right to refuse to give company to her husband she can refuse from cohabitation and the important thing is that this uh, unpaid dower would be an important effective weapon in the hands of muslim female they can means uh, muslim female muslim married women they can use this weapon against their husband in the court of law how they can use this if uh, suit for restitution of conjugal right is filed by husband husband wants to take back his wife by filing a suit suit for restitution of conjugal right that is the only legal way legal procedure to take back a wife by husband so husband can take back his wife his own wife only by that remedy just by filing a restitution of conjugal right suit for restitution of conjugal right so if a husband has filed a suit for civil suit for restitution of conjugal right against his wife unpaid dower would be a bona fide ground to it would be a good defense for her for muslim female she can take plea before the court that dower was not paid by a muslim husband after the marriage even many times she asked for payment of dower but has but her husband refused to pay that dower that meher so that is why she had decided not to live with her husband so in that situation court may pass decree in favor of muslim female that unless unpaid dower would be paid by muslim husband to uh, this muslim wife she would not be so i mean to say that restitution of conjugal right that uh, suit would be set aside means muslim husband will get nothing from the court if he has not paid dower to his wife so unpaid dower you see unpaid dower will not give liberty to muslim female to refuse give company to her husband it will also be a very effective means in the hands of muslim female to take defense and she can use this unpaid dower as a shield protection whenever husband files a suit for restitution of conjugal right in a civil court so you need to understand this and second important thing is that right of remission right right of remission you see what is right of remission under muslim law muslim female is treated as absolute owner of dower dower is exclusive property of muslim female muslim wife muslim wife married women 
हैज एब्सलूट ओनरशिप ओवर मेहर ओवर डावर सो बींग एब्सलूट ओनर ऑफ डावर सी कैन रिलेंक्विस हर क्लेम इन फेवर ऑफ हर हसबैंड सी कैन एग्जेम फ्रॉम द लाइबिलिटी ऑफ डावर सो दैट ट्रांजेक्शन इन मुस्लिम लॉ इज नोन एज रेमिशन ऑफ डावर सी कैन रेमिट डावर इन फेवर ऑफ हर हसबैंड आइदर सी कैन रेमिट होल अमाउंट ऑफ डावर इन फेवर ऑफ हसबैंड और एनी पार्ट ऑफ द डावर इन फेवर ऑफ हसबैंड सो दिस एंटायर ट्रांजेक्शन इज रेफर्ड एज रेमिशन ऑफ डावर हिबा ए मेहर you just look at your screen you just you will find that right of remission this uh, right is very important uh, we, the, the, this this is also very important uh, and effective means in the hands of muslim female so if muslim female has decided to relinquish her claim in favor of her husband so she can make gift in favor of husband one thing which you need to remember that this hiba e meher can only be made in favor of husband not in favor of anybody else so muslim married women can remit her claim in favor of her husband not in favor of her son daughter or any other relatives why so you see muslim female is a uh, considered as absolute owner of her property so there are there are certain requirements for a valid remission what are those requirement muslim female muslim married women must be of sound mind this is the first requirement for what for a remission the second important thing is that she must have a attain the age of majority and that is 15 years after becoming adult in i of muslim law not in i of law age of majority in according to indian majority act 1875 that is 18 years but here under muslim law the age of majority for the purpose of marriage dower that is 15 years after becoming adult after attaining the age of 18 uh, 15 years muslim married women can remit her claim her dower in favor of her husband so that is known as remission of dower she must be of sound mind first element second requirement is that she must have attained the age of majority that is 15 years age of puberty she must have attained the age of puberty and third important requirement for valid remission is that must be remission must be weighed voluntarily there should not be any undue influence there should not be any threat coercion or fraud so that remission must be made voluntarily so this so these are three important requirement sanity she must be seen on the date of remission she must be she must be uh, adult on the date of remission and she and and she must have remitted that claim in favor of husband voluntarily free consent i mean so these are three requirement for a valid remission and the third important remedy where dower is not paid by muslim husband to his wife that is right to retention the property of her husband so you see right to retain you can you just can see on your screen that where dower is not paid by muslim husband to his wife in case of unpaid dower muslim female can retain the property of her deceased husband as long as her dower is realized from her this deceased husband's property so one thing which you need to remember that this right of retention is a precious or important right in the hands of muslim female which she can use against 
against her legal heirs. If legal heirs are not giving that property and property, so Muslim female can retain the property of her deceased husband as long as the dower, the amount of dower is not realized from the deceased property. So this is another important aspect of unpaid dower. So I think that uh, in this way, this and and the most important right is right to this uh, unpaid dower is like unsecured debt, and she can get that unpaid dower by how she can get unpaid dower from her husband if husband is not uh, paying that dower to his wife. So, if marriage has been consummated, cohabitation takes place. And even though Muslim husband is not giving uh, dower to his wife, the only way to get unpaid dower is Muslim female, Muslim married women can file a suit for recovery of unpaid dower in civil court. After filing that civil suit for recovery of unpaid dower, she can get back her claim, her dower from the court. So, court will pass a decree in favor of Muslim female if court is convinced that this much amount, dower nama, meher nama is there and there is documentary evidence which husband should have paid, but he did not pay that amount. If there is documentary evidence, meher nama is there with the help of content of that document, court may pass decree in favor of Muslim female and she would get her unpaid dower with the help of judicial intervention. So, I think with the help of slide, I have tried to explain each and every aspect of dower. I have covered each and every aspect of dower, definition of dower given by Abdur Rahim, definition of dower by Hidayah, the prominent text of Sunni sect, Justice Mahmood observation in Abdul Qadir versus Salima specified dower, unspecified dower and prompt dower, deferred dower, subject matter of dower, amount of dower, who can fix dower and if dower is not paid by Muslim husband, what rights and remedies are available in Muslim law. So, I have covered each and every aspect of dower. So, with this I would like to conclude this lecture and I hope that you all have understood this dower and it would be very beneficial for you not in your examination, but even if you are appearing in competitive examination, if you write whatever I have discussed in this classroom, definitely you will get success. Thank you.